Following Jesus is an eternal commitment, but many believers are afraid that they won't make it. Worried about the temptations and distractions that are offered by the world, some fear that they may backslide. Now, that word backslide is an interesting word because it comes to mean different things to different people. Arguing that Christ would never let them go, some would say that true believers would never return to their old ways, while others think it's possible for believers to once again become ensnared by the world because of free will. Whatever you believe, and no matter where you stand on that question, it should be your desire to remain committed to Christ for life. They promise freedom, but they themselves are slaves of sin and corruption. For you are a slave to whatever controls you. And when people escape from the wickedness of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and then get tangled up and enslaved by sin again, they are worse off than before. It would be better if they had never known the way to righteousness than to know it and then reject the command they were given to live a holy life. They prove the truth of this proverb. A dog returns to its vomit. And another says, a washed pig returns to the mud. That's 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. So whatever you believe about the state of a backslider, the scripture makes it clear that it is possible for believers to have major spiritual setbacks. That doesn't mean that backsliding is to be expected. Sadly, some modern church teachings seem to imply that backsliding is a normal phase in the Christian journey, and it's not. Saying I'm in my backsliding phase as a believer is the equivalent of saying I'm in my cheating phase as a spouse. So how can you prevent yourself from falling into spiritual decline? Here are five simple keys. Number one, read God's word faithfully. If you practice the spiritual basics, you can avoid spiritual crisis. The word of God is your first line of defense against spiritual decline. Everyone therefore who hears these words of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. That's Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Number two, pray consistently. The strength of your spiritual life is directly proportionate to the consistency of your prayer life. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 simply says, never stop praying. Number three, attend church regularly. It's not possible to fulfill all of the New Testament commands without the connectivity of believers. You cannot love, honor, encourage, or make use of your spiritual gifts in isolation. Gathering with other believers will help to keep you spiritually sharp. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of His return is drawing near. It's Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Number four. Repent immediately. When you make a sinful mistake, it's important that you correct and turn from that sin immediately. By living a lifestyle of constant correction, you can avoid becoming deeply entrenched in sin. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Number five, evangelize passionately. Seeing others receive Christ can inspire greater levels of appreciation for salvation. Evangelism will keep you on the spiritual cutting edge. Christ himself received spiritual satisfaction upon witnessing the conversion of the woman at the well. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. That's John chapter 4, verses 32 through 34. By continuing to practice the fundamentals of the faith, you will continue to grow in spiritual strength. You don't have to settle for up and down, back and forth commitment. You can live in the constant flow of surrender to the Holy Spirit. You don't have to lose ground. By walking in simple daily obedience and trust toward God, you can know with confidence that you will never backslide. I'm David Diga Hernandez, and that is your Moment of Truth. For more free teachings like this, make sure you're signed up to my emailing list so that I can send you weekly emails with content that will help you to grow spiritually. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash email. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. 
Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.